Yesterday we looked at a lot of explosions, things going with zero momentum, and then it comes out. In the end, it still has zero momentum, but there are velocities going in all kinds of different directions. Today, I want to talk about collisions. Today we're going to be looking at collisions, or what happens when two things hit each other. And there's actually two different ways in which things can hit each other. There's what's called an elastic collision. Elastic, you can think bouncy. Uh, this would be a, similar to this would be like billiard balls, where one hits and then the other goes. This is called elastic. The other example would be inelastic. This would be where something hits and sticks. Now, uh, you're going to be exploring this with a simulation today, uh, a fat simulation. So, I'm not going to give away too much of the patterns, but I do want to give you an idea of where we can see this kind of thing. We see this kind of thing in this device called an air track. And an air track is uh, basically like a ski hockey table. It's got little holes in it that when I turn on this uh, reverse vacuum, air blows up through those holes. And when the air blows up through the holes, I can put cars on there that move across this track virtually frictionless. So an example would be something like this, and then they kind of move like that. So what I want to do today is I want to actually uh, collide some of these cars. So we're going to talk about the momentum before the collision and the momentum after the collision. Now, we, uh, we talked yesterday with explosions in terms of if I had two cars and they exploded out, we said that the momentum after the explosion has to equal the momentum before the explosion. This is the law of conservation of momentum. If it's a law, it has to apply all different places, and it applies here too. The momentum before the collision has to equal the momentum after the collision. Let's take a look at some examples. If I have a car, that is moving along this direction, we would say that it has momentum in that way. Remember that velocity is a vector, so momentum is also a vector. We would say the momentum is moving in that direction. It has to do with the velocity of the car and the mass of the car. So if I create a collision, I'm gonna keep this car stationary. So this has zero momentum. The other car, a car that's similar in size, I'm going to have go with a velocity. That means before the collision, I have momentum going in this direction. We'll call it one unit of momentum. So before the collision, I have one unit of momentum moving in that direction. After the collision, we should also have one unit of momentum. Let's take a look. So, these two hit, and the momentum gets transferred to the other car. Now, if they were exactly the same mass, all of that momentum would transfer, and uh, you know it, it, this car would be stationary, and that one would move. But what we have is one unit of momentum beforehand, one unit of momentum afterwards. What if both cars are moving? If both cars are moving, I'll try to go roughly the same speed, if they go roughly the same speed, that momentum, we have zero momentum, maybe one unit going this way, one unit going that way. Zero momentum beforehand, zero momentum after, because those two momentums cancel. What if I have this car going really fast, this car going slower? Let's we'll see what happens. So in that case, the slow momentum continued this way, the fast momentum continued that way. But what happens if they're not the same size? Here I got a much larger car. This is about double the mass. And this mathematics is actually kind of hard in terms of determining which, what the uh, velocities of these things will be after the collision. But we can just look uh, kind of uh, collectively or holistically or conceptually and see what we find happening. So I'm going to keep this car stationary and this car is going to move. What do you think is going to happen? Let's 
So in this case, we had one unit of momentum beforehand because I had the small car. I had to have one unit of momentum afterwards. But guess what? This car took off. That's like two units of momentum in that direction. But what else happened? This car went back that way. So I had two units going that way, one going this way, roughly, and thus I still had one unit of positive momentum after the collision. What happens if I hit this car with this car? What do you think is gonna happen? Here we go. If you look at that situation, I had, let's say, two units of momentum going this way. This car took off really fast that direction, so it took some of the momentum. This one slowed down. And slowed down so it didn't have the momentum that it had before. It transferred some to the other car. So these are elastic collisions, when things hit and bounce off of each other. And like I said, the math is actually a little bit hard. You have to use two equations and two unknowns. And it's actually not something that they, they took it out of this AP. So we don't have to worry about that. But we do have to worry about the math for inelastic collisions, where they hit and stick. So in an inelastic collision, these things are gonna hit and stick. But again, we want the momentum before the collision is equal to the momentum after the collision. So let's see what happens. I have a car here and I'm gonna have a similar size car hit it. I put a piece of duct tape on the end here so that when they hit, hopefully they'll stick. Let's see if I can get this to work. So I'm gonna start with this one being stationary and this one's gonna move in. Last time, this transferred its momentum to this one and moved on and in you know, an elastic. Let's see what happens when they stick. Here we go, we're gonna give this a shot. Now what did you notice about this? What did you notice when they stuck? So this one came in really fast. And then what do you notice afterwards? Hopefully you can pick up some of this stuff in the simulation in terms of how this math actually works. I want you to think about the momentum before the collision has to equal the momentum after the collision now that these guys are stuck together. Okay guys, here we go. Uh, so this is what your computer should look like when you open up this uh, FET simulation. Now there are actually two FET simulations on the FET website. You want the one that is the kind of the beta that is that doesn't require flash. There's a little link underneath it, uh, or just use the link that I have in the, in the lab is really the best way to go. So when you get there, you're gonna go into exploring 1D. Uh, this is where things are just in one dimension, moving back and forth similar to what we did with the air track. So you're gonna be able to adjust variables and take a look at how these things are gonna collide as they move. So uh, some of the variables you're gonna to wanna to look at. Uh, down, you're gonna to wanna to click more data here so that you can actually get the momentums and the masses. If you look here, the mass of this is 0.5 times the velocity of 0.42 is equal to 0.21. So the momentum is just really the, the, the uh, product of these two numbers. The other thing you're going to want, uh, you might want to put the momentum vectors on here uh, instead of the velocity vectors, if you're curious in that. I think that's something that you might want to look at, patterns with momentum, since we're looking at momentum. These two vectors are really uh, similar in size. Uh, there's just a factor of the mass that's, that's different. The last thing you're going to look at is the elasticity. In the first two scenarios, you're going to use elastic collisions, which is where they're going to hit and they're going to bounce off of one another. And you can change the size of the mass of the particles. You can put them as a constant size where they're the same size. In the third uh, scenario, you want an inelastic collision. So you want to put this uh, way over here as inelastic. This is where they're going to hit and stick together. So I want you to uh, investigate what it looks like when these two things uh, hit and bounce off in the first two scenarios, and then when they hit and stick together in the, uh, in the final scenario. So you're looking for patterns. You're looking to see if you can figure out the math behind especially this inelastic one. The math behind the elastic, the bouncing off, is actually really hard and we're not gonna do that. Uh, but this inelastic stuff is important. So good luck and uh, pause this uh, while you work on this. And then when you're done, 
uh, go ahead and start the video back up and we'll talk about it. Good luck working through your worksheet. Let me know if you have any questions. I'll see you next time.